Hi, I'm Carl. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I realized a couple of weeks ago that I haven't really done a project video lately. And even further than that, I haven't done a project video involving a scroll saw in quite a while. So, I decided to do this one. Okay, check this out. Right here. Very, very easy project. Here is another one, same style. And here is another one. These two I made back in 2010? No. Yeah, 2010. June of 2010. And here is another one right here. A lot smaller. I made this in 2011. I've been doing these since the early 90s, around 94 or so. And granted, these are not my idea. I, there was a vendor at the local woodworking show. He was selling for RBI. And he had one of these on his wall. I thought it was pretty neat. So I've been doing them ever since then. Showed a couple people here in town and they're doing them. I sold a few of these, but my thing is, I promote these as a project that you can do in a scroll saw. You can put your kids in your lap, put your grandkids in your lap, make, make a bunch of great memories with them. A project that they can do and take home. Hey, look what me and Grandpa made. So, let's get a little bit of detail on this thing. Let me put you on pause and I'll be right back with you. Here we go. The supplies you're going to need for this project. Hot melt glue gun with the correct size glue that goes with it. I have one here somewhere but oh here's one. With the glue that goes with it you're going to need some popsicle sticks. Come from a craft store or you could actually use your used popsicle sticks it doesn't matter. Now I prefer well Eileen's tacky glue works and it dries completely clear, but I use the Elmer's clear glue. It's more than half the price and it will do just as good as the Eileen's. So whichever you have on hand, it doesn't matter. And you're going to need some wood glue. This is Elmer's brand. I have a three quarter or three eighths inch piece of plywood. You need a good quality plywood. You don't need that cheap stuff from Home Depot or Lowe's. You need a good quality plywood with no voids on the inside. And you're going to need some fabric. Now this top one is the one we're going to be doing today so I'm just going to set that aside. Here's different pictures on this fabric. Not nice tractor. I know it's upside down but Let's just go through these real quick. We got a nice set of Labradors right here. This is going to be a fun project to do one day if I ever get around to it. Now I did one with these horses before. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult but still be nice. Let's just, let's just flip it like this. Go through a couple of these. Little girls room would love this one. Nice little teddy bear. Here's another teddy bear. One with deer on it. That's a really nice one. This one has fish. Another teddy bear. Here's another one of these. What's this one? This is a uh, safari scene. Got a lion, giraffes, elephants. That one's going to be fun to do. This one's going to be nice. A little puppy and a kitten. Nice deer scene on this one. Just odds and ends. Different different 
fabric with different scenes on it that you like. Your own personal preference. Now some people say you have to use fat quarters, which is not, that's not completely incorrect, but it's not completely correct either. The reason is fat quarters is a term for measuring the size of fabric. It is not the fabric itself. So any of you experts out there can explain that a little bit better to me. I'd appreciate it. But my understanding is fat quarters is the size of measurement for fabric. And these don't call for fat quarters. It just calls for a piece of fabric that has a nice little picture on it. So that's all the supplies you need. Let's get started on this project. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Sorry if this pattern on the fabric gets a little confusing here, but this is the one that we're going to cut out here. Now if you notice on here, on this particular fabric, here is the edge and this is the part in the middle is what we're going to be using for this one. And the reason is, if you look down here, part of the pattern, the detail is, has been cut off. The same as on the ones on the edge. I want this bush right here and uh, come up here, just an odd shape such as this. You'll see it has the right here, the eagle flying right here, the bush right here, another eagle flying right here. But I want to make sure those get incorporated into the project itself. If I did like a straight cut, such as one of these other ones that I have, like this one, it wouldn't look as good. Now this one looks okay because it has like a little frame around it. But for this certain pattern, I want to make sure that I get as much detail as I can. So, I'm going to cut out around here. Go up through here. Make sure all of the sky is in there. And I'm going to go ahead and cut through this bush. Come back down here. Make sure we get the bear. And then... If you notice right here, it, this could either look like the sky from the mountain or it could look like the water from the lake. So since we already have the sky up here, this can look like the lake down on this portion. So we're gonna cut down through here. So let me get my scissors right here. Go and get this cut out. Let's see here. Just for a rough cut out, I'm just going to go like this. Try to get that bush right there. Take that pine tree or that whatever kind of tree it is, come up through here. Make sure I get this one. Come up through here. I'm gonna get all of that sky. Just cut that bear's legs off. Coming through here. Down this way. Now we're gonna cut around that bush right here. There we go. So this is what we want right now. Let me turn it this way. And this is the previous piece that's finished. So you'll see a little lake coming up through here, such as right here. Bush and the bear. 
this tree right here and eagle right here mountaintop a little bit of sky in there but this one I think I'm gonna cut a little bit higher up here instead of like I did so close right here so I'm gonna, anyway get my drift on that one very simple process right there so first step I have this 3 8 inch piece of plywood make sure it's pretty clean just wipe it off and I am going to glue this onto here making it as flat as possible now I'm going to show you what I will use to make sure it's flat just an old motel key room card credit card just whatever you have laying around I believe this is the one one of the ones that come in the mail so I am going to take my Elmer's clear glue under two bucks I think it's around buck fifty a bottle and I am going to generously very generously put some glue right here let me move this down to the center there we go very generously put glue on here but before I do that I'm just going to take this pencil and mark it up where I want the glue there we go Close enough. Whoops. Pencil lead broke. So everywhere in here is going to be glue. There we go. Okay. There we go. Generously put glue on here. I don't think you can put too much. There we go. I'm just going to put some more up here. Let me just go ahead and spread that around my finger. My preferred method of a glue spreader. Let's just spread this out inside that pencil line. Now, like I said earlier, this is an easy enough project that your child, your grandchild, neighbor's kid, maybe even your wife, girlfriend, whatever, boyfriend. Put them in your shop making something. They'll appreciate it, especially the kids. Okay, got all this glue spread out. Plenty of glue on here. That should be enough. Let's see here. We're going to take the cloth itself lay it down on here make sure it's completely in this glue line just take this spreader whatever you choose to use go from the inside out now one of the reasons of using the clear Eileen's or the clear Elmer's is because 
it will dry completely 100% clear unlike most other glues you'll see all this excess glue coming out that's no big deal and you'll notice I don't know if any of you have ever had your headliner in your car come down but using spray glue to put your headliner back up and spreading it out the glue always comes back through the headliner fabric and this is doing the same thing you will see all this glue coming out and that's not a big deal because like I said you're using a clear glue so it's going to dry completely clear Now, I may have used a little bit too much glue. I said earlier I don't think you could use too much, but the thing about that, when it, once it comes through the fabric, once it dries, it puts almost like a, a hard finish on it. Keeps it adhered to the wood better. I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but you can really see the glue that's come through here. I'm going to make sure everything is spread out evenly. I'm just going to use my hand to go over it, make sure everything's good. There we go. Now one of the advantages of using a pattern like this over the one I had earlier, like this. Now when you have something that has an irregular border, of course it doesn't have to be straight. So here we go. See how this glue squeeze out I have. Anyway, I just have that worked in pretty good. Now, depending on where you live and the humidity in your air is how long this is going to take to dry. I usually let it sit a day or so, come back, finish it up. I'm sure in the summer it'll dry much faster. But you do, do not want to take this outside, obviously, because all the leaves or grass or bugs or anything can will stick to it anyway once you have this spread out let it dry completely dry and the next step we'll come back to it and we're going to cut this out with a scroll saw so so my name is carl i do appreciate you being with us this long and i think you might be happy with the what comes out next? Here we go. Okay. I have a I have a number three blade by Flying Dutchman. It's, the number is FDSR number three. I have it in, installed into my scroll saw. And I have gone ahead. This is the first one that I cut a few years back. But I went ahead and took the liberty of cutting out the big sheet plywood right here. So we have a small manageable size. So if you notice on this one, I didn't leave much skyline up here. So I'm going to put more of the sky in this, this version here. So my first cut, I'm just going to come up through here, cut this out, make sure I get the eagle in there or the bird, whatever kind of bird it is. Come down here, kind of follow the blue skyline. And I'm going to come down through here. Following this. Going to go around this bush and make sure that bear is in there. Whoops, there we go. Sorry about that. Come up through here. Get the lake down here. So 
probably come down like a like a weird cut through here. Anyway, personal preference on whatever you prefer to do with your pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this cut out, and then we'll go to the next step. So as I'm cutting, I'm going to speed up the I'm going to speed up the video. So um, take less time. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and get started on this. Uh, this is not a spiral blade. It's a flat blade. Adjust my lower here. Notice that because the the depth of this and my light right here, I'm gonna have to come back in from this angle and cut this out. Okay, got the top cut out. Let's go ahead and cut the bottom area out. So I'm going to come making this look like a lake instead of a sky. So I'm going to come this way, kind of follow the mountain up here, and come through that way. This old saw here has got many, 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 many hours of use on it. Okay, now we're going to come down this way and just give us a nice flowing curved line down through this way. So that's the first part of just cutting the out the outline. And next we're going to come back in here and cut out some of these ma major features such as I'm going to come up through let's see here. First I'm going to come up through here and cut out this eagle or bird, not an eagle. Then I'm going to cut the mountain out. Then I'm going to come back and cut this little mountain range right here. Come back through here and cut along right here. Then I'm going to cut out the bear and make this uh, creek or river. Cut that out. I'm going to cut out these bears. I'm going to cut this out. Similar to what I have done here. I know it's hard to see, but I have a cut line going through right here, going around this bear, come back down through, and it is right here, this cut line right here, this bear is cut out, this back will show it a little bit easier. Anyway, but let me get this cut out to what I think might look good, following the, uh, the profile of these details in this fabric. So I'm going to cut these out. I'll be right back with you. But first, I always keep a vacuum handy right here.
much of oh, perfectly. We got this there. Put that there right here. Here, just have to set up here, because Got the, <coughs> got the mountains cut out right here. So, what do we have left? I think I'm just going to leave this one as is. So, let me vacuum up this scroll saw, get it turned off, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, now we're going to start the glue up part of this project. You'll see here's the original that I had. And this is the one that we're going to be gluing up. You'll notice the different levels of these. Let's see if we can get... Uh, there we go. Now what I do, I have these popsicle sticks that I use for measuring. I glued two together, then I glued three together. So I have a single, double, and a triple. And pretty straightforward. The mountain should be raised higher than the sky. So I'm going to take one of these singles popsicle sticks, put it under the mountain. Right here. There we go. Which will make the sky recessed a little bit. It's going to be recessed the thickness of this popsicle stick. Then I'm just going to hold it tightly. Now this is not a half to this part, portion, but if you're doing this with your grandkids or whatever, they might find this a little bit faster. But just put a little dab of hot glue right there in a couple of places to hold that. There we go. Let that dry up. Hot glue gets everywhere. 
I'm sure you're aware of that. Okay, we're just going to put this aside. Let that harden up. Let's say put it right here on the floor next to me. Okay, let's go almost the same thing with this river or creek or it could be even a lake. Same thing with that. So we're going to separate these. So the water is going to be recessed a little bit. So put it back together. The meadow is going to be raised a little bit above the water. So again, the thickness of a, the popsicle stick. There we go. So I'm just going to squeeze that tight. Put a little bit of hot melt glue gun, hot melt glue on there. A few spaces to hold it in place. There we go. That should be sufficient enough. Okay, we're going to set this aside. Let that dry up. Okay, the bears, same thing. This bear should be further back than these bears. And um, on mine, these little baby bears are cut out, but on this one I didn't do it. So this bear is going to be higher than this bear. So same thing. Bear's going to be a little bit higher. We're going to, where's it go? There we go. Goes up here in the ear somehow. There we go, just like this. So the bear's gonna go here. This one's gonna be raised higher. So I'm going to squeeze it. Turn it over, put some glue on there. Get these little strands out of there. And the reason I'm using hot, hot melt glue I'll explain this in just a minute when we do our final glue up. There we go. That should be good. Okay. This part here with this little bear which is right here, goes with this section, I believe, no, it goes with the section that's on the floor, so this one goes with, it's like a puzzle. This will be down here. So we're going to let that dry for a minute and I'll be right back with you. Okay, the hot melt glue is cooled off on this one. So we're going to take this section, which is below the mountain scene right here, and we're going to glue this into place. Now, this should be a little bit higher than this section. Okay, so we're going to put a double popsicle stick behind there. No, we can use, we can still use a single because we can put a single behind this one or a double behind this one. So let's use both of them. Let's see here. Whoops. Here's a double. Here's a single. Okay. Double will go there. Single will be right here on the top. There, that's pretty flat. And now... This is going to take a triple because it's just going to be a little bit higher than the other ones, correct? Okay, so here's a, a triple right here. Just going to put this under here. 
get that lined up like so there we go you squeeze that together put some glue on this one There you go. Well, let's just cool off for a second and we'll go to the next part. Okay, this eagle is going to go right here, or this bird. I keep calling it an eagle, but I'm pretty sure it's not an eagle. It should be just a tiny bit higher than this one, correct? For the 3D effect. So we're going to put this in here. Okay, this one. We're just going to do that one by eye, just eyeball it, because just less than the thickness of a popsicle stick. So we're going to, let's see, push that out just a little bit my finger. There we go. Put some glue on there. Okay. Very good. Next we will put the this bear is right here. So we're going to put it just a little bit higher than this level right here. And this we could probably do again just by sight. So let's go ahead and just flip this over. Raise it up just a little bit. Put some glue on there. Let it dry. Okay, now we're going to put the bears on there. So since the bears are the main focus of this little picture, they're going to be higher than anything else on here. So, let's get these in there. So the bear is going to be more prominent than anything on here. So, let's take this one and Move it on out as far as possible. Make it higher than anything else on here. And again, this is just your personal preference on the layering that you that you like. So that's good. I have it layered up right there, so I'm just going to drop some hot melt glue in there. A couple of places. There we go. Let me let that cool down for a second. Okay, that should be sufficient for right now. So, the water scene right here, which is... Somewhere down here. Here's the water scene. So this can be a little bit lower than this level. So we're going to slide this in. And just a little bit lower than that level. So that's close enough for this tutorial. Let's put a couple of dabs of glue on there. Now I am using a uh, glue gun that Dremel sold a few years back and I've never had any issues with this thing. I'm pretty sure it's not in production anymore but it's you can find one of these glue guns made by Dremel if you use a glue gun a lot. Pretty good tool there.
Okay, <clears throat> let's move on. <clears throat> so last we have this water. So it should be <clears throat> just a little bit below these bears. So let's go ahead and get these set into place. And <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and use a a uh, popsicle stick for this one. Set that up under there. There we go. Put some glue on here in a few places. And last will be this little bear scene right here. And it is going to go right here. So let me let this dry just a little, little bit longer. I said dry. I meant cool off. Let this dry, cool off a little bit longer. Then we'll put those last bears in there just by sight. So I'm going to just put it in right there. And it should be just slightly higher than this part. So I'm just going to let it stay where it fell right there. So let's go ahead and put some glue on that one. Right there. Up there would be fine. Okay, now I'm going to unplug my glue gun. Get this aside. I'm going to let this sit about 10 minutes. Make sure that the hot melt glue is completely dry. We'll go to the next step. Okay, this glue should be dried up and cured by now. So the reason we use the hot melt glue is to temporarily hold them in place until we can come back with a wood glue or you can even use your Eileen's glue, glue that you used before. But for this part I prefer using a wood glue. This is an Elmer's wood glue. So I'm going to just go around all these different levels. Come on glue. There we go. And where there's no hot melt glue, I'm going to put a bead around here. Now we all know that everybody's done crafts or some type of woodworking in the past. We all know that hot melt glue does not hold very well which is why I like to come back and use a wood glue let's see I'm going around all these little places where this would touch each other such as puzzle pieces go ahead and Get this around there. So when this wood glue dries, I'm going to come back and scrape off what I can of this hot melt glue and put more wood glue down in its place. So, okay, I'm going to let this set up. I can put some more right here. I'm going to let this set up for 
a while. Then come back and, like I said, scrape off all this hot melt glue and then replace it with this Elmer's wood glue. So this is going to take at least an hour or so for it to dry. So we'll be back in a few minutes and see what we can do with it. Okay, here's the final look at this. You can see how there's different layers or different heights of the different 3D portions. Here's the back. The glue has not completely dried yet, but you get the idea. Anyway, a little bit of history about this. I saw this for the first time around 90. 1992 or so at a woodworking show one of these vendors had one of these on his wall and I've been interested in these ever since a couple of years ago probably one of the leading bloggers named Steve Good asked me to do a video on this and he would say he told me that he would guarantee that I would sell a lot of videos on how to do this, but not really my goal. I just want to do YouTube videos. So Steve, when you see this video, if you want to go ahead and promote this, this is a very simple, easy idea. Like I said in the start, this is a great project for somebody to put one of their loved ones in their lap, a little child, grandchild. Have a fun project for today. Very easy. The kids will love it forever. One thing, make sure you sign the back with a date. Put your name, child's name, the date, whatever. So, my name's Carl. I do appreciate being here and watching this.